This is Bergstrom State Line Quiz Bowl. Now from the Collins Aerospace Studio at the Nordloff Center in downtown Rockford, here's your host, Eric Wilson. Welcome to another edition of Bergstrom State Line Quiz Bowl. We are happy you are here spending some of your time with us. And you can tell how happy they are by their smiling faces. Our two teams who are ready to face off this week. First, let's say hello to the Dakota Indians. And if you can't tell by the applause, both of these teams brought a serious entourage with them. Dakota has been part of Bergstrom State Line Quiz Bowl since day one. Last two seasons, they lost their first round games by a combined 50 points. That is less than in the last round there, less than three questions. Looking to change that today, I would imagine, Cooper, right? Cooper yeah. is the captain. Introduce us to your starting lineup, Cooper. Hi, I'm Cooper. Um, to my left is Audrey Boyer. To my far right is Dawson Stuckey. And to my near right is Clay Cardoza. And you get bonus points for in knowing all their last names, too. Yep. Very cool, because we don't always ask that for the captains. Cooper, nice job. Welcome. And also, how about a nice round of applause for the Auburn Knights? So for the first time in State Line Quiz Bowl history, Auburn is looking to bounce back from a loss that probably stings still a little bit. For you guys up here who you remember it, um, our eight-time champs fell to Belvedere North in our finale last May. Senesio probably stings a little bit. You are the captain. Introduce us to your starting lineup. Uh, I'm Senesio. To my far left is Juan. To my near left is Kobe. And to my right is Alex. And before we get going, congratulations on your perfect ACT score. Thank you. That's a pretty huge accomplishment. So nice job, Senesio. Uh, and a fun fact about Quiz Bowl, these two teams have never met before in our tournament. So it's anyone's guess what's going to happen. Our first round is the buzz in. So hands on your buzzers, contestants, the two most important rules. Wait for me to call your name and say your answer loudly and clearly. Remember, if you answer, you're on your own. No conferring. Hands on your buzzers for our first question this week. Good luck, teams. What god who is married to the golden-haired Sif is the... Senesio. Thor. Correct. Like a pirate had a baby with an angel, according to Drax. Auburn's first on the board this round. What structures are covered with the hardest material in the body, have cementum, pulp, and dentin layers, and come senesio? Teeth. That's correct. Come in incisor and molar forms, two in a row. What year in the Chinese zodiac, which began in February 2022, falls between the years of the ox and the rabbit? Clay. The monkey. Incorrect. Auburn. These could be your points. Go ahead, Kobe. Dog. Incorrect. It's the tiger. First, no answer of the game. We're back to a new question. What book memorized by people with the title Hafiz was ordered? Kobe. The Quran. Correct. Ordered, compiled by Abu Bakr, split into surahs, and is the main scripture of Islam. In what 19th century European kingdom was the slogan, God, country, and king, used by enemies of Isabella II, who? Alex. Uh, Spain. Correct. Who opposed her rule in the Carlist Wars. What composer, whose namesake Broadway theater is the longtime home of Hamilton, wrote The King and I with longtime lyricist Senesio? Rogers. Yes. Longtime lyricist Oscar Hammerstein. They, as a pair, they were known as Rogers and Hammerstein. In 2022, what American company announced plans to split into three divisions, including a Model E division? Clay. Meta. Incorrect. I'll finish for Auburn. Focused on electric cars. One. Tesla. Incorrect. Ford. What molecules produced in the Williamson synthesis? Senesio. Ethers. Yes. Have the generic formula ROR prime. Have a diethyl type once used as a general anesthetic. Taylor Swift's song Carolina appears in what 2022 film starring Daisy Edgar Jones? that is based on a best-selling novel by Delia Owens. Alex. Where the crawdads sing. You got it, right before the buzzer. Nice job. Cantaloupe terrain, cryolava lakes, and a retrograde orbit are among the unusual Senesio. Mercury. Incorrect, I will finish for Dakota. Unusual features of what largest moon of Neptune? Also Ariel's dad's name in The Little Mermaid, Triton. What country is home to the tomb of the Mahdi at Om Omdurman and contains the junction of the White Nile and Blue Nile, Clay? Egypt. Incorrect. I will finish at its capital of Khartoum. 
Alex. Sudan. That is correct. Nile probably made you think of Egypt, for sure. That's natural. Ten more points for Auburn. What dynasty, whose Yangla emperor moved the capital to Beijing, ruled China from 1368 to 1644? Juan. Mean. Correct. Was known for its blue and white porcelain. There's those colors again, blue and white. What capital of the Indian state of West Bengal is the site of a missionary congregation founded by Mother Teresa? Juan. Calcutta. That is correct, or Kolkata. We would have taken that as well. The speaker claims to be bloody but unbowed in what William Ernest Henley poem that ends, I am the master of my fate, I am the captain of my soul. That poem was Invictus. What surname was shared by the author of the tragic play Camille and by his father, who depicted 17th century French soldiers in The Three Musketeers? Senecio. Dumas. Dumas is right. And that's all the time we have for this round. One round in, Auburn already into triple digits, 110. Dakota's not on the board yet, but we have a lot of points left. We have three more rounds to play. Our volleyball is the next round, and we will play it for you right after this break. Stay with us. The Auburn Knights are off to a very strong start here in Bergstrom State Line Quiz Bowl. Already in triple digits, they have 110 points. Dakota doesn't have any points yet, but that will change in this round, of course. We've got volleyball questions, um, lightning round, which is a ton of points, and then our Mercy Health final challenge. I'm getting ahead of myself, though. Let's get to volleyball. You know the rules. This is a conferring round. Back and forth until we run out of time. Because of the coin flip, Auburn gets our first volleyball question. Sinesio, are you ready? Remember, you can work as a team. We encourage teamwork, but the answer has to come from the captains. Senecio and the Knights, here is your first volleyball question. In what country did the assassination of President Juvenal Habariyamana in 1994 spark the mass murder of Tutsis in a Central African genocide? Rwanda. Yes, that is correct. Also the focus of the Don Cheadle film, Hotel Rwanda. Cooper, here's your first question of the round. What Confederate general who oversaw the massacre of surrendering black soldiers at Fort Pillow became the first Grand Wizard of the Ku Klux Klan? I thought I heard the whisper, but you have to, did you say, for, somebody say Forrest? Yeah, that was Audrey, wasn't it? I thought I saw you feeding that answer. It was Nathan Bedford Forrest. Um, buzzer got you though. Back to Auburn. What island where the Linear A script was once used was home to Knossos, the capital of the Minoan civilization and is the largest Greek island? Crete. Yes, that's correct. Linear A developed around 2000 BC. Back over to Dakota. What constant whose use is discouraged by the Tau Manifesto is equal to circumference divided by diameter and is approximately 22 sevenths or 3.14? Pi. Yeah, that's right. You knew that one really quickly too. I didn't even need to finish it for you. You get those 10 points. Feels good to be on the board. We're back over to Auburn. In what country did Prime Minister Mahinda Rajapaksa, whose brother Gatabaya is the president, resign in May 2022 after violent protests in Colombo? Syria? Incorrect. Sri Lanka. Back over to Dakota. What author who wrote art reviews under the pseudonym Corno di Bassetto wrote about a bet made by phonetics professor Henry Higgins in Pygmalion? Audrey, I could see the wheels turning. Are you ready for it? George Bernard Shaw. Back to Auburn. What city on the Swan River is the capital and most populous city of Western Australia? The buzzer got you. Sometimes that conferring will eat up time. And I know someone said it, or at least I saw someone mouth it, Perth. I know that was one of the cities you tossed around. Back over to Dakota. What politician who was assassinated by Carl Weiss promoted a populist campaign called Share Our Wealth and was a kingfish from Louisiana? Former governor and U.S. Senator Huey Long. Back to Auburn. Malate is converted to oxaloacetate, when, which then reacts with acetyl, acetyl-CoA in what metabolic cycle in aerobic respiration? The Krebs cycle? Yes, Krebs cycle is correct. Back to Dakota. What task for which John von Neumann created a merge algorithm 
can be done using quick or bubble algorithms and involves putting elements in order. Sorting. Yes, sorting or sort. You get those points, and that's how we end the round with those Dakota points. Dakota's up to 20, Auburn up to 140. Not a huge change in scores, but uh, both teams added to their totals, which is good to see. We're halfway through our game. Our lightning round is next, but first, you get to play at home with the Bergstrom bonus question. Stick around to see if you know the answer. In a Charlie Brown Christmas, which Peanuts character builds a gray snowman? It is Bergstrom bonus question time here at Bergstrom State Line Quiz Bowl, a courtesy of our friends at Lino's of Rockford. Point won't change here, but whoever gets this question correct will get some pizza from Lino's. Hands on your buzzers, contestants. Let me know if you know this answer. In A Charlie Brown Christmas, which Peanuts character builds a gray snowman? Senesio. Linus. Incorrect. Dakota. Pizza on the line. No pressure. Go ahead, Clay. Charlie. Incorrect. It's Pigpen, the only Peanuts character who can raise a cloud of dust in a snowstorm. No pizza or pasta. Boy, that's fitting for a Charlie Brown Christmas, isn't it? Nobody gets the pizza or pasta. <laughs> Let's take a break. We'll come back with our Nika IBEW lightning round. Lots of points on the line. No pizza, but plenty of points, and that's coming up after this break. No pizza or pasta from our contest or for our contestants, but let's get back to points. Shall we? That's more important, right? To, at least to find out who wins the game. Right now, Auburn has 140, Dakota has 20, but in the Nika IBEW Lightning Round, if you run one of these categories, it'll add 100 points to your score. That'll make a huge difference. Because of the coin flip, Dakota gets first choice. So, Cooper, these are your three categories this week numbers, laws, and presidents, and the Danube. Uh, numbers. You got it. Name these types of numbers. So I'll give you the definition. You describe the type of number. It's as simple as that. You'll have 60 seconds to go through this category, and then Senesio, you and the Knights will have 30 seconds to go to whatever they don't get. Advice for both teams, you can pass. If you're getting hung up on a question, you know the clock's ticking, just go ahead and pass. We can always come back to it if there's time left. Don't waste too much time on a question that's got you stumped. All right, here comes your first one, Cooper. Remember, work is a team, but the answer needs to come from the captains. Are you ready for your first one? Yes. Here we go. Name these types of numbers. Integers divisible by two. Even. Correct. Sequence beginning, beginning one, one, two, three. Fibonacci. Correct. Numbers that equal an integer to the third power. Cubes. Correct. Real numbers that equal an integer divided by another integer. Pass. Integers greater than one that are not prime. Um... Pass. Numbers whose square is a negative number. Imaginary. Correct. Subset of the integers denoted n. Naturals. Correct. Real numbers that are not algebraic. Uh, irrational. Incorrect. Any prime number one less than a power of two. Pass. Numbers less than the sum of their proper positive factors. No time to answer there, the clock is up. So we heard that answer, but didn't get a chance to um, get any points for it. You got 50, you added that to your score. There's five left for you, Senesio and the Knights. You only have 30 seconds for them, and I will read them as fast as I can to give you full advantage of that 30 seconds. Ready? Name these types of numbers. Real numbers that equal an integer divided by another integer. Rational. Correct. Integers greater than one. Composite. Are, correct. Real numbers that are not algebraic. Transcendental. Correct. Any prime number one less than a power of two. Mersenne primes. Judge, well, yes, correct. Number less than the sum of their proper positive factors. Is this perfect number? We can try it, I don't know. Perfect. Incorrect. And that was the last one, nothing to go back to. The only one that we didn't get the answer for was that last one. Abundant numbers, we've also taken excessive numbers. So Auburn is now at 180, Dakota is at 70, and Auburn, you get to choose from the two categories that are left. So Senesio, we've got Laws and Presidents or the Danube. Do you guys want to do Laws and Presidents? Yeah. Can you guys? <laughs> We're going to do Laws and Presidents. All right, we'll keep it in the country. Nice work. Given a piece of legislation, name the president in office when the legislation was passed. So both teams, all of your answers are going to be presidents. I'll give you the piece of legislation. 60 seconds is on the clock, and I will read as quickly as I can. Could be a quick, quick round. Who knows? Senesio, are you ready? Yep. 
Here comes your first one. Given a piece of legislation, name the president in office when the legislation was passed. Patriot Act. Bush. Bush. You'd be more specific? Junior. Junior. No. Incorrect. Civil Rights Act of 1964. LBJ. LBJ. Correct. The first Homestead Act. Um, Pass. Alien and Sedition Act. Adams. Adams. Correct. Ag Can you be more specific? John Adams. Correct. Agricultural Adjustment Act. FDR. FDR. Correct. Kansas-Nebraska Act. Uh, Pass. Pure Food and Drug Act. Nixon. Nixon. Incorrect. Compromise of 1850. So. Pass. Oh, okay. Smoot-Hawley Tariff. That's um, Hoover. Hoover. Correct. Interstate Highway Act. Eisenhower. Eisenhower. Correct. First Homestead Act. Jefferson. Jefferson. Incorrect. Kansas-Nebraska Act. Polk. Polk. Incorrect at the buzzer. One, two, three, four of them, right? Did I do my math correct? One, two, three, four, five. 230, you're up to. So again, same scenario, Cooper. There's five left, 50 points potentially added to your score. You've got 30 seconds to run them, um, and I'll go as fast as I can for you. You ready? Mm -hmm. Given a piece of legislation, name the president in office when the legislation was passed. Patriot Act. Uh, Bush Sr. Incorrect. The first Homestead Act. Pass. Kansas-Nebraska Act. Pass. Pure Food and Drug Act. Pass. Compromise of 1850. And that's your time. No answer for that. Uh, those, those last five were pretty tough. I will run them for you. Now, the Patriot Act, we couldn't take senior. We could, we, George W. Bush is what we needed. We had to have that specifically. Uh, we could have said Bush 43. That would have also been acceptable. Um, the first Homestead Act was Abraham Lincoln. Probably would have helped if you had years for all these, right? Kansas-Nebraska Act was Franklin Pierce. Pure Food and Drug Act was Theodore Roosevelt. And the Compromise of 1850, Millard Fillmore. We've got one round to play in our game, the, the final challenge round, uh, where each question is worth 20 points. Auburn right now is 230. Dakota has 70. We'll finish our game after this break. One more round to play this week in Bergstrom State Line Quiz Bowl. It's our final challenge. Contestants, other than the point change from 10 points per question to 20 points per question, all the rules are the same as round one. And the two most important ones, wait for me to call your name before you answer and say that answer loudly and clearly. Hands on your buzzers. Good luck to our two teams. Auburn right now has 230. Dakota has 70. We'll see what happens after all these questions are done. Here's the first one, contestants. What phenomena whose semi-diurnal type cycles through high and low phases twice a day? Senesio. Tide. Yes. Caused by the moon's gravity and our changes in sea level. What law enforcement official created COINTELPRO to spy on civil rights? Alex. J. Edgar Hoover. That's right. Spy on civil rights leaders in the 1950s as the first director of the FBI. What war in which forces under Winfield Scott captured Chapultepec? Alex? Mexican-American War. Yes. Led to the U.S. gaining California and involved the U.S.'s southern neighbor. Three in a row for Auburn. A triangle with a vertical line at one vertex is the circuit symbol for what devices? Senesio. Diode. Yes. Which ideally allow current to pass only in one direction. You're above 300 now. In 1965, what western hemisphere country replaced its national flag, the red ensign, with a new red and white flag that depicts a maple leaf. Alex. Canada. Yes, our other neighbor. What novel in which a vacation to New Mexico changes the life of Bernard Marx depicts Kobe? On the road. Incorrect, I will finish for Dakota. Depicts a dystopian world state and was written by Aldous Huxley. Kobe, uh, Clay. Dune. Incorrect, Brave New World. A 2022 collaborative pixel art project called Place was hosted by what website? Cooper. Reddit. Yes. Nicknamed the front page of the internet. One man who lives on a houseboat called the Almost Heaven was instrumental in crafting the Inflation Reduction Act and is a West Virginia senator. Senator. 
Senator Joe Manchin. What unit is the energy needed to warm one kilogram of water, Senesio? Calorie. Yes, by one degree Celsius, often appears on nutrition labels with the abbrevi abbreviation CAL. What man who won a Pulitzer Prize for his 2019 novel about a Florida reform school, The Nickel Boys, also won one for the Underground Railroad? Senesio. Whitehead. Yes, Colson Whitehead. After what battle in which Datis' invading Persians lost to Miltiades in 490 BC did Phidippides supposedly, Alex? Marathon. Yes, run 26 miles to announce victory. Now the name of 26.2 mile races. What libertarian economist at the University of Chicago wrote the book, Brielle? Um, Milton. Incorrect, Dakota wrote the book, Capitalism and Freedom. Clay. Friedman? Yes, Milton Friedman. Brielle, you had the first name. Milton Friedman was the last name that we needed. Dakota's 20. What American author created Reverend T. Lawrence Shannon in The Night of the Iguana and Maggie and Brick Pollitt, Senesio? Williams. Yes, Tennessee Williams in Cat on a Hot Tin Roof. And that is how we end the round with Auburn pushing just above 400 points for their first game this season, 410. Congratulations, Auburn Knights. You are moving on to the next round. Uh, Dakota, you played a great game. It was really um, good having you here. Hope you had some fun. How many of you are seniors? Well, it's been really fun watching you grow up, and um, so we want to so practically grow up playing our game, right? Because Dakota has been part of our game since day one. So we're glad you participated. Good luck in whatever you do. And as I say to all of our graduating seniors, you have a standing invitation to come visit us anytime. All right? And we hope you come visit us next week for another edition of Bergstrom Stateline Quiz Bowl.